Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another review. And today, I have the Delta Pro Power Station from our good friends over at EchoFlow. Now, I've reviewed a lot of portable power solutions on the channel, and I love this kind of technology because essentially what it gives me is this perfect little bundle of energy that I can take with me out in the field to charge and operate all of my portable devices whenever I'm away from an electrical outlet. And what EchoFlow's done with the Delta Pro is built a power station that's larger and smarter than most of the other power stations on the market. And I'll get into all those details in a minute, but before I start the unboxing, I wanted to talk about the company a little bit because one of the things that makes this so special is the engineering behind it. And EchoFlow is a company that employs some brilliant engineers that sit down and look at what a power station can provide. And they don't just try to build one that's close to the others that are on the market. They're innovators. They look at that market segment and say, you know what? Can we charge it a little faster? How do we fix that? Can we make it a little smarter so when I plug things into it, I'm protecting those external devices? Can I give customers all the ports they need to operate and charge their electronic devices externally? Can we figure out a way to let them charge it at home, let them charge it in the car, let them charge it from a solar panel? Can we build a smart generator that runs on gas, that plugs into the back of it, and when this is talking to that generator and this drops below a certain level, the generator kicks in, charges it back up, and then turns off. Can we build an application that consumers can look on their phone and tell exactly how much current's being drawn, how it's charging, what kind of ports are active? They did all that in their products, their entire line of products, which again is an innovation in the field. Other companies see those kind of innovations and then try to build them into their next generation product. So I love a company like this that's looking at a market and figuring out a way to build a better mousetrap. And that's exactly what you're getting with the Delta Pro and really all of the EchoFlow products. So I'll stop raving about them in a minute, but as I go through this, I'm hoping to prove that point to you. So the way I'd like to organize this clip is to start with an unboxing because I always like to show you everything that's included with a kit. And that way, if you buy the product, you know exactly what you get. And then I'll actually talk about the specifications and some of the features that make this a winning product in my mind. Now, again, it's larger than most of the other power stations on the market. It is portable. It's got wheels on the back right here, and it's got a nice handle on the front you can pull out so you can wheel it around like a piece of luggage, but it's big. And it's really designed to be sort of a whole home generator where you plug it in the basement or plug it into your garage. You have a power failure. This kicks in and provides power for your home. It's also perfect if you're an RVer. You can put it in your RV, pretty much run everything in that RV off of a single unit like this. Uh, it's also great if you're a tradesman. Maybe you're out in the field and you've got to put up a fence or you're building a deck or something. You have to run a table saw and some drills and I don't know, your arc welding out there. Maybe you've got a toaster oven with you. All of those things can run on this unit because it's big, it's beefy, and it's incredibly smart. All right, so the, uh, the unboxing. Let's get started with that. I'm getting ahead of myself. So when you first open up the box, you'll find the beautiful Delta Pro. Now it's big and it's heavy. It's 99 pounds, so it's really not meant to be lifted into the back of your car, but again, it's got wheels on it and it's designed to be a whole home generator. But again, it's got that handle on the front so you can wheel it around. 3,600 watts of external charging capabilities. That's gigantic. And here's another cool thing. They built in this X-Boost technology so it can handle a surge up to 4,500 watts. So if you've been out in the field and you're plugging drills in or you're plugging a refrigerator in, the minute that compressor kicks in, it's gonna draw a lot more current than it will when it's normally running. Same thing with a drill, or if you're running a table saw and you're running to a knot in a piece of wood, it's gonna draw a little extra current. So knowing I can go from 3,600 watts up to 4,500 watts during the surge is a really powerful thing. All right, so the other things that are included with the kit, you can charge this in one of three ways. You actually have a bunch more ways, but the basic ways you're gonna charge it are home. You're gonna plug it into a wall outlet and you can charge it with an AC kit. You can also charge it in your car. They include that. This plugs into your convenience outlet in your car. This plugs into the side and you can charge it from your car. You can also charge it from a series of solar panels. And I think it's nice to actually include the cable to, to charge it that way as well. This plugs into the side. These are standard MC4 connections. You can plug it into a series of solar panels and fast charge it that way. You'll also find an adapter for the back. Now on the rear, there are two ports right here that you can plug external batteries in. And I'll get into that in a minute, but essentially you can double and even triple the capacity of this by plugging in companion batteries. And I'll have a separate clip where I talk about that. But there's where you'll plug the batteries in. This adapter plugs into one of those ports and connects up to their smart generator. They make a generator, like I mentioned a minute ago, that runs on gasoline. You can run that generator it integrates or talks to the actual Delta Pro. And when this drops below a certain level, which you can set in the application, the generator kicks in and feeds energy into this to recharge those batteries. So if you're running this as a home generator, having that smart generator outside the house and you're not in your garage, but outside your house because the fumes are dangerous, put it out there and then connect it up to this 
it'll never run out of power, especially if you've got solar panels connected to it. And that's another cool thing is you can use multiple charging schemes at the same time. So you can have solar panels coming in, the AC plugged in, smart generator plugged in, and you can charge it incredibly fast. You'll never run out of energy. All right, so that's that. Oh, they also include a 5521 cable. Now, this has got a bunch of connections for DC. Two of those connections right here are 5521 ports, which are barrel connections. And each of those will supply three amps at 12.6 volts DC. They give you a 5521 cable. Now, there's a lot of other cables available in the market that you can plug in there. One of them that I like to use a lot will plug into the 5521 and actually give you another 12 volt outlet that you can use. So you can plug two of those in and draw more current out of it. But again, it's a complete kit. Everything you need to use this thing right out of the box is here in front of you. Also included is an instruction manual that explains everything you need to know about it, what the display does. And I'll go through some of that in a minute. There's a warranty card included. And they also include a guide for solar panel connections. And again, it's a standard solar panel connection on the front of the unit. You can use anybody's solar panels. If you like EchoFlow, they make some amazing solar panels as well that are portable. You can fold them up, put it back in your RV. The other cool thing with the solar panel charging, and I know there's a lot of features here I'm going through, this includes an MPPT circuit. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a management circuit because solar panels, when you put them out in the sun, depending on how much sun you're getting and the sun's moving around in the sky and there are clouds out there and there are eagles flying by. So the amount of sun that hits that solar panel can vary a lot during the day. So it's going to drop a voltage or go up in voltage and current. What the MPPT circuit does is look at that energy that's coming in from the solar panel and it grooms it. It actually squeezes every electron it can out of that data flow and puts it into the batteries in a very, very safe way. A lot of the solar panels require an MPPT or you've got to get a specialized solar panel. With this one, you don't. As long as you have a standard solar panel, the MPPT circuit will take charge and, and groom that actual uh, energy coming in for the battery. So you're in really good shape there. All right. So that's basically the unboxing. Now, what excites me so much about this unit is the three aspects of what a portable power station is all about. So you have the, the charging part where you get electrons into the battery. And then essentially it's a giant battery. So you've got to have really good batteries in it. And then are those batteries being managed and can they handle it and what type of batteries are being used? So in this one, they're using lithium iron phosphate, which is one of the latest battery technologies in the market. And the reason that's important is because all the energy you throw at this thing is gonna land in those batteries. And those batteries, the lithium iron phosphate, are the latest technology, which means they're gonna retain that charge for a very long time. So if you charge it and you let it sit for a couple of days, you're not gonna come back and find it's at 50% charge. It's gonna retain that energy, which is really important, especially if you're out in the field, you don't wanna come back a day or two later and see that it's decayed down. So that's the first thing. The second thing is they've got a lot of recharge cycles. So 6,500 recharge cycles, if you do the math on that, that's decades. So you're not gonna have to worry about the batteries going bad anytime soon. It'll certainly outlast me. So I like that an awful lot. The other thing is it's very good with temperature. Whereas a lot of other battery chemistries don't like hot weather, don't like cold weather. If it's in your truck or it's in your RV, it's probably in a cabinet underneath the RV. It's exposed to heat and cold all the time. You definitely wanna have those lithium iron phosphate batteries in there. So that's a technology built into it. So if you're charging the unit, uh, so the batteries are, are really, really strong. So let's talk about the charging a second. So you have three different ways you can charge it. You can plug it in, like I said, at home. Basically, you'll plug it directly into the unit here in the back, and you'll plug it into a wall outlet. Now, you'll notice there's no external charging brick. And that's one of the innovations that EchoFlow has pioneered. A lot of the other portable power stations in the market have this external charging brick, just like on your computer. And you plug that into the wall and the other end of it has a barrel connection on it. You'll plug it into most of the portable power stations out there. And what that brick does is it converts the AC in your home, 120 volts, 60 cycles in the US down to a DC voltage that will charge the batteries. And it works okay, but the challenge with that is now you've got an external device you gotta drag along with you. And believe me when I tell you that external charger is gonna go bad on you long before the batteries go bad in the unit. So you've gotta worry about that breaking down over the years. But the biggest issue is those things are wildly inefficient, which means you're plugging it into the wall, converting the AC to DC, and only a small portion of that energy is making it to the batteries. You're wasting a lot inside that unit, which does two things. Number one, you're wasting electricity, but second, and probably more importantly, that trickle coming through there takes a really long time to charge the unit. So what EchoFlow did in their earlier models, and in this model as well, they pioneered this, is they built that charging circuit into the unit. So it's an extreme charging circuit that's proprietary to EchoFlow that actually does an amazingly efficient job of converting the 120 volts from your wall outlet into the voltage required to safely and quickly charge those internal batteries. So much so, 
that you can get this up to 80% charge in less than 90 minutes. So you can deplete it during a power outage, plug it in, and in less than 90 minutes, you're up to 80% of the charge. And you've got a, a bunch of different ways to charge it. Like I'd mentioned before, I can plug it into the wall, I can add a solar panel to it, I can run uh, the generator on the front, I can charge it from 240 if I've got the home panel. So a lot of different ways to get the electrons into those batteries. But the key again is, you charge it from AC, the inverter's built inside. So you can actually use that reverse inverter to charge those internal batteries, and it's wildly efficient. Un again, compared to other portable power stations on the market. As I mentioned, you can use the car charger if you want. The only challenge with the car charger is that it can't charge at the same current rate as a home uh, plug, plug it into the wall. And there's also the concern that if you turn your car off and you try to charge this, it doesn't know that your battery is dying. So it's just gonna keep sucking electrons out of your battery. And if you let it charge for two days, you might come back and not be able to start your car. So you've got to be very careful when you're charging from your car. But if your car is running or you've got an RV, you can plug it into your, your RV and charge it that way. I love the solar panel option because if you're camping or if you get an RV, maybe you've got solar panels on the roof, you can plug it right in here and you can charge the batteries from the solar panel. So the charging circuit is great. As I mentioned a minute ago, it's got the lithium iron phosphate batteries in it, which is the latest technology. So that battery bank uh, will last you for a very, very long time. The other critical thing about the charging circuit, and this plays into the, uh, the external connections as well, is the battery management system. What EcoFlow built here was this really sophisticated battery management system, which controls completely the amount of current that gets into the unit and how it's delivered to the battery. So the battery management system is looking at the batteries at any given moment based on the temperature, what the discharge is currently on the batteries, and it's looking the amount of current that's coming in, and it's carefully grooming that current to flatter that battery at that particular moment. A lot of the other units on the market, just take whatever DC voltage is delivered to the unit and throw it across the batteries and hope for the best. With this one, they're monitoring those batteries every given moment, and they're making sure that the current that's coming in is delivered to those batteries safely, efficiently, and charge them as quickly as possible. That battery management system also helps protect external devices that are connected up. So they've, they look at what you're plugging into the unit, and make sure they deliver the correct voltage and current for both the AC, the DC, and the USB connections on the unit. And I'll go through those next. The other concern I have with most portable power stations in the market, now that we understand how they charge and what kind of battery technology is inside of them, is how do I use the energy that's in that battery to actually charge and operate my external devices? And that's where EchoFlow really shines. So for starters, the three types of uh, charging you're going to do from a portable station like this will be AC, just like you plug something in in the wall at home, DC, which is what you plug into your car, and then USB, which is the latest standard to charge all of your portable devices, like phones and tablets and cameras and game consoles, anything you plug into a USB port. And EchoFlow has three different circuits. They've got AC on the front right here. You've got five full-sized AC outlets. Each of those are three-pin uh, grounded outlets, so you can plug in there. You've also got a larger one here. These are 20-amp circuits. This is a 30 amp circuit. So if you've got something really, really big that runs on 120, you can plug it in there like a dryer or refrigerator or something that's got that type of plug on it. And you can actually draw 30 amps out of it which is important because if you're trying to run a washing machine, you can't plug it in 120 and hope that, hope that it's gonna work for you. So if you have an appliance that uses that plug, you can plug it in there. You also have uh, the ability on the side to use DC connections. There's a standard 12 volt port right there, just like in your car, you plug it in there. Anything you charge in your car, you can charge off that. As I mentioned, and that's a 10 amp, 12 volt 10 amp circuit. There are two 5521s below it. And those are a unique connector that there's a lot of cables out there that convert that to charging cables for like a laptop, a DVD player, or other portable devices that you can charge directly off that. Those are 12 volts at three amps each. So you've got two more ports you can use. And if you use the conversion cable I mentioned before, you can plug those in there and you'll actually have two more DC outlets that you can use for other car charging devices. In addition to that, they built in an Anderson plug there. Now an Anderson plug is a unique plug. You won't find that on most of the portable power stations. What an Anderson plug allows you to do is get a high current DC uh, feed out of the unit. And you'll find those on trailers. You'll find those on charging stations in our RVs. This one is a 30 amp Anderson connector. So if you've got something that uses the Anderson connector, you can plug it in there. That's the highest current drain you can take out of this thing for a 12 volt DC connection, 30 amps, which is pretty impressive. And as I mentioned, the DC port right here is 10 amps. Now, the other thing you want to concern yourself with are the USB connections and they're on the front of the unit. So right here, you've got four of the USB-A connections along the top. Each of those are high power, 2.4 amp external. Two of those are quick charge as well. Now quick charge technology 
is, is a smart technology. It's a USB-A connection, but if you're charging something like a tablet, a laptop, a game console, maybe your phone, if your phone is QC or quick charge compatible, the minute you plug it into one of those USB-A ports, this will negotiate with the phone. It does a sort of a, a check with the phone to see what kind of voltage and current is needed on the battery, and it adjusts both the voltage and current that it sends to that device to flatter it. So it's going to charge it quickly and safely, and it's constantly monitoring the battery charge and making adjustments as needed as that battery gets full. Now again, you can plug it in there and that's the QC. Where this really shines though is below that are two USB-C ports right here. Those USB-C ports are the very latest in charging standards. Most new phones use USB-C, but what's special about both of those USB ports, USB-C ports, is they're both PD or power delivery, which is another technology for fast charging. So if you've got a latest phone that uses PD technology, the minute you plug it in there, the same type of handshake is going to take place where that port's going to look at the device. It's going to see what kind of power requirements it needs. It's going to deliver the right voltage and current. And it's going to vary that as needed to charge that battery quickly and safely. The big difference though with most PD charging ports like on this unit is that other portable power stations have a PD port that may only deliver 30 watts or 60 watts. 60 watts would be pretty good. These are 100 watts each. So if you have something large, maybe you're flying a drone and you've got big drone batteries or you've got your laptop with you or you've got some of these new portable gaming consoles that require PD with at least 65 watts, you've got two ports on here that both deliver 100 watts of USB charging power that's PD or power delivery to external devices. And the best part is you can use all of these things at the same time and you can turn them on individually. So if you're not using the DC, turn that off. If you're using the USB, turn that on. If you want to use the AC, there's a button back here to turn, whoops, you want to use the AC, there's a button above that to turn the AC on. So you have a choice of using just what you need at any given moment. And that's nice because a lot of other portable power stations, when you hit the main power button, everything comes alive at the same moment. And the challenge there is that if you're not using the AC, you're wasting energy and you're wasting money, you're wasting energy through that port. So turn them off, use what you need, you can turn them on as you want to. Another cool feature, which again, <laughs> blows me away, is that you're thinking, well, how else can I charge this thing? Well, if you're on the road, maybe you're driving one of the EV uh, vehicles out there, guess what they put in the side? They put a fast charging port right here that you can use one of those charging stations you use on your car. You can plug it in here and quick charge this thing. So if you're a tradesman, maybe you're stopping at one of the convenience stores to go in and get a cup of coffee, and this is hanging off the back of your truck, just plug it in and charge it up. That's a really, really rare thing. There aren't a lot of companies that provide that. Beyond that, um, they built an entire ecosystem around this. So as I'd mentioned, 3,600 watts for the unit. It's great standalone. But you can add two battery packs to this to double and even triple the output power on it. And then you can combine two sets of three together with the home system to provide 25 kilowatts of power. Now, when you think about it, the average home in the U.S. is around 10,000 kilowatt hours per month. If you look at maybe Louisiana, you're a little higher. I don't know what's going on down there in Louisiana. You guys are about 14 kilowatts. I live in New Jersey. I'm about 12 kilowatts. So if I put one of these with two battery packs coupled with another one with two battery packs, I've got 20, 25 kilowatt hours of power. That means I can run my entire home on this thing if we lose power for a couple of days. And here's the best part. I can leave them plugged in all the time. There's a smart home panel that EchoFlow makes available. You can connect it up to your home panel. If you lose power, it switches over to this, and it doesn't take an hour to switch over. It's 20 milliseconds of switching time, which means you've got an emergency power station built here that the minute power drops, this thing kicks into action, and you've got power for your home. It can run 10 circuits per unit, so you can, you know, you can decide what you want to run in your home, but I think it's wonderful that I can have this in my basement or the garage. I can have solar panels up top, drinking sunlight, throwing that energy into the unit, charging it up for free, basically. I can plug it into the wall if I need to. I can use the smart generator if the sun's not shining because some big storm blew through that month. It's just a wonderful product from that perspective. But I love the fact that they give you all of this expansive capabilities where you can make it bigger and smarter and, and more powerful than it was the day you bought it. That's really nice. The last thing I'll mention, they were one of the first companies to power an external application. So with this unit, there's some connections on the side. I'm going to do a close-up in a minute, and I'll explain all those. But there are connections on the side where you can plug in a transmitter for a remote control. So if you're in your RV, maybe this is mounted under the bed in the back, or it's outside in a cage. You're up in the front. You want to know what's going on with it? Well, you put this little control on your dashboard, and you can see exactly the status of the unit. What's charging currently? What kind of current's being drawn out of it? And the best part is the application will connect to your phone as well. So any smartphone can connect to this directly, and you can control exactly how much charging is taking place. You can turn things on, turn things off, all through the application, which is a wonderful thing because you don't have to be in front of the unit. Even though they give you a beautiful display on the front here, 
that gives you all the details you need, and I'll explain that in a minute. That's great when I'm near it, but if I'm not near it, boy, isn't it great that I could remotely control this thing in my basement or my garage from the comfort of my living room. So again, EchoFlow, when I talk about them being this brilliant, innovative company, all of these things I'm mentioning were really first found in their products. And a lot of other companies have adapted them. Now you're starting to see smart, fast charging from other companies and better battery management systems included and lithium iron phosphate batteries. But EchoFlow is always on the leading edge of things. And I just love the fact that they're constantly innovative in thinking about what's next? What can we do next? What's gonna be important to the consumer? How can we build a better product? And the Delta Pro product, my per perspective on it is, it represents pretty much the pinnacle of portable power stations in the market today, especially for large ones like this. And again, EchoFlow makes an entire line of products. If you need a smaller one, they've got a product for you, but I love this Delta Pro. It's a whole home generator that just does the trick. Now, if you stay tuned next, what I'll do is take a closer look. I'd like to show you all the plugs and connections because it's hard for you to see it that far away. And I'll do some close-ups and explain how you charge it, what you can connect to it, how you discharge it to other devices externally, and anything else I can point out when I go through it. And then I'll come back at the end with just a couple of things I want to reinforce that really separate this from all the other portable power stations on the market because... I, I'm, I'm a fan of technology. I, I fall in love with good engineering technology, and this has got it in spades. I am constantly surprised at what this can do and the innovations that are built into it. And I'll go through some of those at the end so you can use those when you're comparing this to others you may be considering. So stay tuned, we'll do the closer look next. The main power button for the Delta Pro is located right here. And to turn the product on, you'll hold that for a couple of seconds, and this display will come to life. It gives you all the information you need to understand the current status of the product. Starting on the left with the large 03, that's telling you the number of hours that are left on the charge that's currently in the unit with the devices you have plugged in. And that's really handy because if you're plugging in a lot of devices, you'll know exactly how long you can run those devices based on the charge that's still in the unit. In the center is the current charge level. Right now it's at 29%. There's also a graphical display around the outside with bars that disappear as you use the charge from the unit. So right now three bars are up, which is about 30%. When you fully charge this, that outside ring will be lit up. And I like the fact that I have a numeric value as well as a graphical representation of how much charge is left in the unit. To the right, our input current and output current indicators. When you're charging the unit, you'll see input current go up and you'll know how much energy you're putting into the batteries. Once you plug devices into it, the output current will go up and you'll know how much energy you're drawing out of the unit. Below that are your USB connections. You've got two full-size USB-A ports right here. Each of them can deliver 2.4 amps at five volts, which is the highest amount of current a USB port can deliver. To the right of that are two more full-size USB-A ports. Both of these are quick charge or QC compatible. And if you plug a device in that's got a QC capability, these ports individually will look at that unit and actually adjust the voltage and current that it sends to that device to quickly and safely charge it. Below that are two full-size USB-C ports. Each of these are both PD compatible, which means if you plug in a device that's got power delivery capabilities, this port will analyze that device and make the adjustments needed to send the right current and voltage to that device, again, to charge it safely and quickly. The other key thing here is that these ports each can supply 100 watts of charging current, which means you've got the ability to charge laptops, larger game consoles, drone batteries, anything that draws a lot of current can be charged through those two ports. The AC portion of the Delta Pro provides four full-sized AC outlets that are three-prong grounded, as well as a larger outlet. These can provide 120 volts of pure sine wave output at 20 amps, and this one provides a higher current of 30 amps. All of these can be turned on by tapping that single button. On the right-hand side of the unit are where all the DC connections are made. Starting in the top, you have an Anderson port that'll supply 12 volts at 30 amps. Below that is a standard car port that'll provide 12 volts at 10 amps. Below that are two 5521 ports. Each of those are 12 volts at 3 amps. You can turn the entire DC section on with that switch. Below it, you'll find that IoT reset button that actually resets the connection between the Echo Flow and the application. Below that is a pairing button that allows you to pair the unit with your phone. If you're using the remote control that I mentioned earlier, it'll plug in right there, and you can put it in standby mode by switching this off. On the bottom right side of the unit is the infinity port, and this is used with a charging station on the road, and you can actually fast charge the unit using a standard EV charging station. On the rear of the Delta Pro, you'll find the ports that are used for charging the unit. They're behind this door. You'll simply lift that up. To start with, you'll find the DC port right here, and that's used with both the included car charger and the solar panel kit. 
To the right of that is a fast and slow button. Normally you leave that in the fast position. That governs how much current is sent into the batteries from the AC unit. Normally fast will charge it very, very quickly. So you can get it up to 80% of a full charge in less than 90 minutes. But if you're plugging it into an outlet that maybe doesn't have enough current available, you can move it down to the slow position. The default there is 400 watts, but you can control that through the application and adjust it as needed. To the right of that is a full-size AC port. You'll use the included AC cable, plug one end in here, the other end into a wall outlet to charge the unit. You'll also find a circuit breaker. If you exceed the current requirements of the unit, you could pop that breaker. Below it are two more doors that are used for plugging in the external batteries. So if you're going to use a second battery or a third battery, they'll plug in right here. This is also where you'll plug in the adapter for the smart generator. So if you're going to use the smart generator that's triggered by a low voltage trigger in this one, you'll plug it in there, plug the generator in, and that'll actually charge it through there. And below that, you'll find ventilation slots right here that are designed to keep the unit cool during operation. I hope that closer look was helpful. I tried to give you a real good feel for all the connections and ports and everything available on the unit so you understand how to use it. Again, there's a complete owner's manual included with the kit that goes into greater detail and there's some help videos online on their website if you've got further questions. They've got a great customer support system to actually respond to your questions. Now what I'd like to do is point out a few things again that are really unique for this unit that I feel separated from all the other units that are on the market. Even at similar capacities, I think this has got the brains and the power to deliver the answers you need as a whole home generator or even as a great source for an RV power supply or if your tradesman out in the field and need portable electricity when you're out on a job site. So the three things I like to focus on are charging, storage, and discharging. Now with charging, it's really important you charge a product really quickly. And as I mentioned before, they've got the extreme charging technology built into the unit, which means I don't need to use an external charging brick, which is gonna be clanging around inside my RV and eventually will break on me. And then I've got trouble trying to find a replacement for it. Everything you need to charge this is built into the unit. You'll simply use the cord they provide at home, plug it into an AC outlet and you're off and running. I also love the fact that I can charge it from a solar panel and I can charge it from my car. Now, most of the other units on the market do that but they don't provide the ability to use multiple charging schemes at the same time. With this one, you can combine a bunch of different charging options and charge it even faster if you need to. But that extreme charging technology means I go from pretty much almost zero, or I've never run it down that low, but let's say 25% up to 80% in less than 90 minutes. So if I'm in a hurry to get it recharged because there's a storm coming, I can plug it in, have it charge really quickly, and be ready for any kind of blackout or power failure we have at the house. All right, so the battery technology is another thing to consider. Oh, well, as far as charging goes, I forgot to mention again, they've got a charging option on the front that you can use one of the charging stations along the side of the road that you use to charge your EV when you're out there driving your car. So again, if you're a tradesman or you've got an RV, just pull into a, a convenience store if they've got a charging station, plug it in, and you can charge the unit up fast that way as well. That's a fast charging option. All right, so the battery technology is another important consideration. A lot of the portable power stations in the market use basic LiPo technology, which is lithium polymer, and that's an okay technology for certain things. It's not great for a portable power station because it's really the chemistry of LiPo is really susceptible to hot temperatures, cold temperatures. It doesn't hold the charge real long. It doesn't have a lot of recharge cycle. So you know out of the gate that the main thing that this is built on is that battery pack. And if you're using LiPo technology, it's got a, it's got a life to it that may not be flattering because you may want to keep the unit longer than those batteries will survive. This uses lithium ion phosphate batteries, which is the latest technology, which gives you, again, up to 6,500 recharge cycles. And if you do the math on that, even if you charged it once a day, I don't know, it's decades, right? So it's going to last you a long time. So that's great. It also has a retention of the charge much longer than other battery technologies, which means if you charge it, leave it in your garage and you forget about it for a couple of weeks and a storm rolls through, it's going to hold most of that charge. It's not like you're going to go out there and go, oh, I'm only at 40%. What happened? It's going to hang on to the charge. The other thing is it's extremely tolerant, which LiPo isn't, to warm temperatures, cool temperatures, changes in temperature. And that's really important because with the LiPo technology, if it's really hot, you can charge it, but you're gonna damage the batteries while you charge it. Same thing when it's cold. With this one, it can handle a charge when it's warmer, when it's colder, when it's moderate, it doesn't really matter. That lithium iron phosphate, I keep forgetting how to pronounce that, lithium iron phosphate technology is built to handle those changes in temperature. All right, so the batteries are great. 
And then what are we doing as far as getting the charge back out of those batteries? Well, I always talk about the ports that are available in a unit, not just the number of ports, but the style of ports, because there's a personality to the way you draw the electrons out of this unit to charge external devices. So let's start with the AC. On the front of the unit, as I mentioned, they give you four full-size grounded AC outlets. Each of those are 20 amps. So you can draw 20 amps out of each of those. They also give you a larger one you can draw 30 amps out of. So pretty much anything you want to plug in at home, you can plug in here. So if you're using it as a whole home generator, a washing machine, a dryer, a refrigerator, maybe has got that kind of outlet on it, air conditioner, plug it right in there, you're good to go. As far as the DC goes, they've got a, a collection of DC ports on the side. You've got a full 12 volt outlet right there, just like in your car, that'll supply 12.6 volts at 10 amps. You've got two 5521 connections that'll supply 12.6 amps at three amps each, and you can use connection cables to convert those into other outlets, just like in your car if you want. You've got an Anderson plug right here that'll deliver 12 volts at 30 amps, which is a lot of current. So if you've got something you need to charge that needs more current than you can provide from those other connections, plug it into the Anderson port and you're good to go there. The other thing that's really nice about it is if you've got a lot of portable devices, maybe you're bringing cameras and phones and tablets and kids game consoles and fans, whatever runs off of a USB connection, a standard USB connection, you've got a ton of ports there as well. You've got four full-size USB-A ports on the top. A couple of those are QC enabled, which is the quick charging standard that a lot of phones use, a lot of game consoles use. You can plug it in. It'll actually recognize what you've plugged into the device, and it'll charge it quickly and safely by changing the voltage and current being delivered to that device. A lot of other portable power stations in the market may give you a, a, a USB-A port on there, but they limit the current and they're not quick charge enabled. These are individually able to deliver at a minimum 5 volts, 2.4 amps each, which is the maximum you can get for a standard charging current. And you've also got the QC capability built in that can take it much higher if needed, as long as your phone is compatible. You've also got two USB-C ports on there that I mentioned earlier are <laughs> incredibly powerful. They're 100 watts each, which means anything big and thirsty, like a laptop or drone batteries or, or whatever you want to plug into a USB port that requires that kind of current, you can plug it in there and you can charge that quickly and efficiently. And what's cool about it is, both of those USB-C ports are independently delivering 100 watts. It's not like between those 100 watts and then you can't really use both of those ports at the same time. Here, both ports work at the same time. A couple other cool features. It's got a beautiful display in the front that gives you all the information you need to understand the current state of the product. But more than that, they give you metrics on how long the unit will run with the charge that's on it, charging the devices you have plugged in. And that's really important during a power failure because you may plug this thing in and maybe you're six, seven hours into that power outage. You want to know how much longer you can run the fan, the refrigerator, the air conditioning unit, whatever you plugged into it. And that gives you a metric to tell you that even better, you can get a remote control for this where you can have it in your basement and monitor that from upstairs in your kitchen if you need to, or you can use an application on your phone, which is free, that connects to it and gives you all the specifications you need on that application. And there's a lot of other things built in too. For example, the extreme charging on this, like I'd mentioned before, allows you to charge it quickly. You can turn that off using the switch on the top so you can charge it at a lower rate because maybe you're plugging it into an outlet that doesn't have 20 amps of current that can deliver a fast charge to it. Um, you can do a bunch of other things with it as well uh, on the back, but the application gives you access to all of those parameters to make those adjustments as needed. And I think for my money, I'm just blown away by the amount of features that are built into this home station that you really don't find in other units out there. Some units out there have some of these features, but this one packs everything you need into a home station that will give you plenty of power during those power outages. It's smart enough to use with the entire ecosystem that EcoFlow has put out, including their smart generator, their solar panels, uh, their home uh, panel that you can connect to your home that'll actually use this when there's a power failure. So if you lose power, it'll flip over to this again in 20 milliseconds, which is like the snap of a finger, you're on battery power. And you can have solar panels on your roof and charge it for free at that point. So everything about it just really makes sense. And I love the company. has been around for a while. They make a complete line of products from really, really small all the way up through the Delta Pro. And they're smart products and they all work really well together. So that's pretty much all I had for today. I really hope you found this review helpful. If you're interested in this product, I've got a few links below where you can go check it out on Amazon. You can also go check it out on the EcoFlow site. Now at the time of doing this clip, EcoFlow is running a summer special. So you may want to go check it out quickly because they have these specials coming up all the time. They actually have a special, I think for the next 10 or 12 days, where there's a really decent discount on this product. So give it a look. Um, I think it's a wonderful product and I hope you found this review helpful. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And again, until next time, <laughs> stay nerdy.